Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Simply Shell, also known as Michelle. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my belly slash navel piercing. I'm going to be letting you guys know what to expect, the pain, the cost, as well as the aftercare. My overall experience was bomb. It was nothing that I regret. So I want to share this video with you today, letting you guys know my experience. If you're somebody who's thinking about getting your belly button pierced, or if you're somebody who has your belly button pierced but you're facing a little bit of concerns with the healing process. So before I get into this video, make sure that you stop what you're doing and subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also don't forget to click that bell so you never miss when your girl uploads a new video. So before I start this video, I just wanna put a disclaimer out there. I am not a professional. I'm just gonna tell you guys my experience that I went through and also what I've researched. Give you guys some tea and fill you in just a little bit before you go get your piercing. You guys don't know I've had a lot of piercings in my life. Any and every piercing you can think of, your girl has had them and yes I've had them I've always been that type of person has been into tattoos and all of that kind of stuff it's just my thing so out of all the piercings that I have gotten done in my life I always thought about getting my belly button pierced but I always strayed away from it only because the thought of a needle going in my stomach just skeeved me out scared me I don't know but for some reason or another I just got a random thought almost a month ago and I was like you know what I'm ready to do it it was just like a spur of the moment type thing and I was like I'm gonna get my belly button pierced so I was a little bit afraid but my overall experience was bomb nothing that I regret the first thing I want to talk about is my experience now going into a tattoo parlor you want to always make sure that they are licensed okay I don't mean going to your friend's tattoo parlor or somebody that you know of a friend of a friend always be sure to make sure that they have that registered license printed up on that wall in a little plaque or a little frame you want to make sure that your piercer has a lot of experience when doing any type of piercing I don't care what it is you just don't want anybody to touch your body that can cause serious issues later on when I first got there I made sure that everything was good you want to make sure you're comfortable with the piercer you want to make sure that they inform you of everything that they're going to do so everything was everything for me when I got there she was very clean very sanitary gloves are a must and everything was in packages so whenever you get a piercing you want to make sure that everything comes freshly out of the equipment that there's no tools or anything laid out without you seeing them open it that's key to preventing any type of infection it wasn't as bad as I thought it was I guess I was just more nervous than anything it kind of felt like a quick burn a quick pinch the most uncomfortable part of it was when she put the jewelry in I felt like a really quick burning sensation short-lived so it wasn't that bad but if they're a great piercer they're going to ask you you know if you had any surgeries like they're gonna check the lip of your navel to make sure that you're able to get it because not everybody is able to get a piercing it all depends on how your belly button is if you have an Audi or if you had any serious surgery that is a good piercer so you make sure that they thoroughly check you before they say oh yeah you can get it and then after you know she checked me to make sure that my belly button was a go so she marked me and I always thought that when you get you know a piercing you would lay down but she said that you know I had to stand up just to make sure that my stomach was straight being that if you lay down and they mark you your stomach can shift and when they pierce it you will end up with a tilted piercing and nobody wants that it wasn't too bad it was like one two three she was really cool and she clamped it the clamp is really what helps the pain I find that that was very helpful because it's already kind of like applying pressure to your belly button so it makes the needle go in really quick needles very very thin but it is long sharp and it's one, two, three. Another thing that I want to let you guys know is you want to make sure that the piercer does put like a long gauge, a surgical steel, you know, in your piercing. Sometimes, not all, but the body can reject the piercing. That means it can cause infection. It just can get crazy. You know, something foreign is in, in your body and your body's not comfortable with it. It's definitely going to show you it and tell you it. That's another thing to be mindful of when getting a piercing. I mean, how can we know? But if you do notice discomfort, pain, like hot to touch, sensitivity, it's oozing, you know, you're not getting any type of relief you definitely want to go to a doctor so after I got it pierced she then applied some ointment and she cleaned it she sterilized it well that's the first thing she did do she sterilized it before she marked it once she pierced it put the earring in she then went again and sanitized it as well so that was a one two three thing she advised me on what to do the cost for my belly button piercing in New York where I went was only $40 not too bad as far as the aftercare goes I was told just to make sure that I clean it with an antibacterial soap so today I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do it but I just want to let you know the things that you do need dial antibacterial soap as well as unodine sea salt you want to make sure that you get those two things during your healing process that is vital to make sure you keep your piercing clean so I want to 
would say it's been a little over a month since I had my piercing and I haven't experienced like any struggles or anything. The only thing that I will say the con about getting your belly button pierced is that you tend to get it stuck or snagged on a couple of clothing. So you want to make sure that you're wearing a lot of, you know, joggers or loose fitting pants, shorts, only until you're not feeling the discomfort because the first couple of days you will feel discomfort. You will feel soreness or whatever the case you, that's all to be expected. You notice a little bit of bleeding the day or two after when going in cleaning it. Don't be alarmed by that. That is totally normal. Your body will display a little bit of fluid, sometimes pus, a little bit of lymph, also known as crust. That's just your body's way of trying to heal. And the first couple of nights when you are sleeping, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're gonna have to sleep on your back. And I am not a back sleeper. I'm a side sleeper. So I was totally bummed about that. But again, temporary, nothing to worry about. Yeah, so now that I feel like I covered everything, I'm gonna get up and show you guys exactly how I've been caring for it, show you guys how my belly button is looking now. Okay, so the most important thing that you wanna do before even touching your piercing is to make sure that your hands are really clean. So I'm just gonna start off by washing my hands to get off any germs or bacteria before touching it. So the first thing you're gonna need is a shot glass of some sort, kind of like a suction cup. Some dial, as you can see, your girl's been using, using this. Some Morton's natural sea salt does not supply any iodine and some type of purified or distilled water. I'm going to pour about, this is considered like a cup of distilled water, preferably warm. So I'm going to pour about, this is considered like a cup of distilled water, preferably warm. So I'm just gonna heat it up for a good 10, 15 seconds in a the microwave. Then I'm just gonna take a fourth of the sea salt and pour it in there. You don't wanna put too much sea salt because that can cause irritation and you just wanna mix it up like so. I'm gonna take this little towel and you can just wrap it, you can just wrap it around and tuck it in your pan so that you don't make a mess on you. Now we're gonna go in with this Dial Antibacterial Soap. It's best to use a Q-tip or a cotton swab, whatever, but if your hands are clean like mine are, you can just use your hands. And you wanna just be really gentle and just rub softly, making sure that both areas where the holes are, are nice and clean, just to get out any blood, any excess fluid that may be, you know, on the piercing. And it's best to do this in the shower, honestly. I'm just doing this for the video, but when I do clean on a daily, my daily cleaning does entail me being in the shower. It's just easier to rinse off everything. So I just do this for a couple of seconds, and as I do it, I just gently go up and down just to move the jewelry. Not too much to aggravate it, but you know, just to help it so it doesn't get stiff or tight. Now that I've rinsed it clean, I'm just gonna go in with a paper towel and just dab it. You wanna gently dab, not too hard, but just to keep the surface dry. Now I'm gonna go in with the warm sea salt water. You wanna place it right underneath your piercing kind of lean forward and apply it like so. So you can see that it's being coated the top and the bottom of your piercing. I sometimes shake it and it's best if you lay down, obviously, but I'm just showing you guys this. And you wanna let this sit on for about five to 10 minutes and do this for at least when you first get the piercing, at least twice a day, you don't need to overdo it. But if you're like sweating a lot or something gets on your piercing, for example, shampoo or whatever it is when you're doing something, anything, harsh chemicals, you wanna be sure to quickly use that antibacterial soap and then apply the sea salt. And now I'm just gonna go in again and just pat it dry like so. And if you look closely, how I can tell my body is you know, healing properly is, it starts to itch, almost like when you get a tattoo. If you haven't gotten a tattoo, then you may not understand, but if you get a cut on your arm or whatever, and it starts to heal, and new skin starts to grow, your skin may start to itch. That is definitely a number one key to let you know that your piercing is healing properly. Also, if you don't see any redness or any marking, scarring, or any pain, if it's not hot, you know, those are the signs that you kind of want to look out for anything that may be a concern for you to go see a doctor. But for the most part, you can see how well my piercing is looking. There's no crust. I'm able to move it up and down. 
Okay guys, so this pretty much wraps up my video. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you're deciding to get this piercing and you're just a little scared or you're a little unsure, I say go for it, especially if you're of age and you can make your own choices. Do what makes you feel happy. Let me know if you decide to get a piercing. Let me know if you've had a piercing in the past and if you still have it, if you face any concerns or any struggles when you had your piercing. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you never miss when I upload. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.